اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم و بهی نستعین انه خیر و ناصر و معین ثم الصلاة و السلام على سیدنا و نبینا محمد و على اهل بیته طیبین طاهرین اللهم کن لولی یک الحجت ابن الحسن صلوات که علیه و على آبائه فی هذه الساعة و فی کل ساعة ولیا و حافظا و قائدا و ناشرا و دلیلا و عینا حتی تسکنه و عرض کتاوا و تمتعه فیها طویلا به رحمت که یا ارحم الراحمین This is the first lesson of RSR 2014 and the topic is spiritualize our life As the title shows us the main purpose of these lessons is to know the realities which we can give the meaning to our life by them and to elevate ourselves to high levels of iman faith to have better understanding of god <clears throat> therefore the first and the most important question which i try to answer in these lessons is about god The questions like who is God, how can we know him, why do we worship him, does he have any role in our life, how can we feel him, then how can we have friendship with him are the major and common concerns, not just for us, for all the believers of all religions. And the basic issue in every religion is knowing God. And the basic subject and it is the ground for other religious discussions for example if we want to uh, discuss about prophethood or discuss about the leadership i mean imamat or if we want to discuss about ma'ad the resurrection day at first and the the first question and the ground of all these discussions is uh, god <clears throat> and who is God? Because of this, the theologians, philosophers and mystics all try to answer this question by sufficient reasons. Although there are some differences in the methods which they use for proving the concept of God, however, they all have just one aim to clarify the ways of knowing God. They try to prove it by some reasons from the Holy Scriptures and other religious sources and in addition by some intellectual reasons. But why is it so important to them and why this subject has been the first and the major issue to discuss about in every religion? And why the theologians, philosophers and mystics of a certain religion have uh, defended their interpretation of the concepts of God against the other uh, scholars in other religions for hundreds of years. When we investigate the human history, we uh, know that knowing God is not just a concern of human today but also is the uh, this is the concern of all human all over the history as you know there were many wars which has been um, uh, many wars which had have, have been happened because of the interpretation of concept of god and many people have been executed and killed because of it in the history even now some of the followers of the re of a certain religion believe that followers of the other religions uh, they do not worship real god and they blame them because of their thinking uh, about god the worshiper of one god like uh, muslim and the jews and the sikhs and the Christians who believe on Trinity or the Hindus who believe on several gods all of them they claim that they worship the real God 
But no one says that Allah is like the Father in Christianity or Jehovah in Judaism or like Brahman in Hinduism. It shows us that speaking about God is not just the scholaristic or academic subject. And although the philosophers and the theologians and mystics in every religion, they try to uh, interpret the concept of God, but it is the subject that affects on the life of humans. It means that God has a great role in our life that shapes our individual and social life and can make our life meaningful. And because Allah Ta'ala has a great role in our life, it is our duty to search about Him and to have good proofs for the existence of God and for feeling God in our daily life. I don't want to speak about the different beliefs and interpretations about God in religions. And uh, in another word, I'm not going to compare the religions. Just as a Muslim who believe on the unique God, I want to speak about Allah and his role in uh, our life. I try to explain the some of the attributes of the unique God Allah. But let me start the first lesson by asking this question that as a Muslim, do we believe on a real God? At first glance, maybe it is strange to ask uh, this question from a believer. And you may say, how can I believe on, on an unreal God? And you may say that I know that Allah is unique. I worship him and I pray five times a day. I ask him for help when I'm in trouble and I can feel him in my daily life. Okay, I know that we all as Muslim do the same things and believe on the same God. But there is an ayah in Quran that Allah Ta'ala talks to the believers. And Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, amanu. All oh, the believers who say that we uh, believe on God, believe. You know, in this ayah, Allah Ta'ala doesn't talk to kuffar or doesn't talk to people. We do not have here, Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun, or we do not have here, Ya Ayyuhal Nas. Here we have, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. And Amanu are the people who claim that they have Iman <coughs> and have faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again Allah says that uh, you must believe. What does Allah mean by this order? Does it mean that our belief on Him is not a real belief? Or it means that our belief is not strong enough to name it as faith and it is better to say that we are Muslim not Mu'min. But here Allah says that Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu it means that we are Mu'min. Whatever it is it shows me that <clears throat> maybe there is a problem here in my faith. And Allah orders me to analyze my faith and test myself to find a problem and to remove it from my heart to believe on him completely and correctly or perhaps I have some misunderstanding about him if I say that for example Allah is Hay or Allah is Qadir or Allah is Alim or Allah is Hakim Maybe I have some misunderstanding about the meaning of these attributes. Or perhaps I don't worship a real God. It means that the God, the Allah that I have in my mind, it is the God that I have made it 
by my hand and I have in my mind this God then I try to worship this God and because I worship this God there is no response from the real God to me I ask him but there is no answer and I want him to help me but because I worship the God that I have in my mind there is no answer from the real God and it is an unreal God and maybe I do not know because I do not have uh, sufficient search about God and uh, perhaps because I just uh, follow the others in my uh, religion in maybe in my um, country maybe if I uh, just follow my parents uh, and I say okay I am Muslim I worship the gods and the Allah that they have in their mind and uh, they can affect I my thinking but you know it is the duty for all Muslim for believing on God and Prophet and the Imams, the leaders and about the resurrection day, about these things the principle of Islam, not Ahkam it is the duty of all Muslims to think about them and to have good proof of uh, these subjects because of this, I start this lesson by this question that do we believe on real God? And inshallah, I try to uh, speak about some of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to analyze uh, ourselves and uh, our faith and to analyze again uh, our uh, beliefs about uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these attributes of him uh, you know that Allah has many names and the beautiful names and the best names belong to Allah Wallahul asma'ul husna means the beautiful names and the full names in the meaning belong to him and let's start the first name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to talk about the first name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the first name of him is Hay this is the name that uh, I have chosen to speak about it in the first lesson one of the names the beautiful names of Allah ta'ala is Hay and Hay means alive there are uh, some other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran but in Surah Al-Baqarah there is a very important ayah as uh, Ayatul Kursi and uh, you know that it is a very beautiful and very uh, basic ayah in, in Surah Al-Baqarah that shows us the <coughs> greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have many ahadith about this ayah one of them is this hadith that uh, it is better to recite this ayah three times a day in the morning at noon and at night after the salat and it is better to put your eyes uh, put your hands on your eyes and recite this ayah and it is good to memorize this ayah and recite it by your heart. At the first of this ayah, we recite, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum." It means that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the unique God, and He is alive. Huwa al-hayy. So in this lesson, I want to speak about Huwal Hay. What is the meaning of Huwal Hay? Allah is alive. It means that Allah is not dead. Allah is alive. So we must know the meaning of death and the meaning of uh, life. Mot and Hayat. What is the difference between Mot and Hayat? What is the difference between dead? between death and between life 
And actually, what are the differences between a dead matter and live matter? As you know, there are two kinds of lives in this world. The first one, I name it as vegetal life or hayat nabati, the life of a plant. And the second one, animalistic life or hayat heywani, the life of an animal. When you look at your environment, you can find these two hayat. <clears throat> but why we use the terms of life and death, hayat and maut, for just these two groups of creatures? And why we don't use these terms for other materials? Uh, like, for example, chair, like pen. Uh, why we don't use these terms for these matters because we can see the movement in the plants and the animals and because of the movement we say that this uh, matter is high and that matter is dead or uh, mayet but we do not have uh, we do not uh, see this movement in other matters like a chair or a pen for example, we say a dead tree or we say a dead cat, but we don't say a dead chair. But under the light of the science, you know that uh, although we cannot feel the movement in material things, there is a hidden movement inside them. I mean among their atoms. But we can see this kind of movement by our naked eyes. We can feel the movement in plant and in animal because they grow up and we can see it in the chair because chair does not grow up. However, growing up is one sign of the life and there are other signs of the life in the creatures that we cannot feel and we cannot see by our naked eyes. I mean that we don't have dead matter in the creation of God. There is no place for death. And even in material things. Why? Because there is a movement inside them. And the movement is the sign of life. It is a shape of life. Which not a stop. When it begins, it not a stop. When sometime, when something is destroyed, actually it doesn't finish and come to end. It begins another life in another shape. Even the material things can have some different shape of lives. For example, a chair is made of wood from a tree that has been alive one day in the shape of plant and the chair is another shape of it. But the movement inside both of them, the tree and the chair, will not stop. Or like our body, for example, my body dies, but the movement in it will not stop. Just the circulation of blood can stop in my body, but not the movement. My body becomes soil and the soil feeds the plants and it is the movement, it is the circulation of life. And this circulation of life is like the circulation of civilizations that will not stop but just take another shape. So there is no death in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why do I say that there is no death here? Because there is no stop point in it. It is better to change our vision about death. To know the better uh, knowledge about life according to Quran and Majid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about maut, about death Allah says in Surah Al-Jum'ah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim innal maut al-lazhi tafirruna min fa'innahu mulaqikum thumma turadduna ila alam al-ghaybi wa shahadati fayunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'amalu Allah Ta'ala says the death that you escape from it, it will come to you and then it returns you back 
to the invisible world alamul ghaib wa shahada what does it mean and uh, you know that quran tells us about the reason that some people and especially non believers they escape from death because they think that death is the end of the movement but allah says that it is not the end of the movement and death just is a returning point to the starting point quran even doesn't say that death will take you to another world we have here toradun it says that death will return you back to the invisible world and it means that the way of our movement is not like a, a straight line it is round like a circle and the things in this world is in the circulation of life so the death is a good point to start another kind of life but not all kinds of death because some of them is a, a beginning of a bad life however some of them is a good point to start a better life like the death of martyrs shuhada quran says a'udhu billah min ash shaitan ar rajim wa la tahsabanna alladhina qutilu fi sabilillah amwatan bal ahya'un 'inda rabbihim yurzaqun it means that shuhada has the better life than the life that they have here and the second life of them is better than the first life and do not think that they are mayyit they are dead no they are alive now at the presence of their god so we are in the ocean of life and this world is full of life not full of death and there is uh, no place for death <coughs> and until now we know that death is not the end but it is the starting point to a new life and when we speak about life and death we always we think about the time and about the place about the time and place that they are surrounded us we can't come out of the time and place because we live in them we live in them and by death we transmit just from one time to another time from one place to another place if i say that i'm alive there is a question that when and where or even when i say i will die the question is this for all human that to where i will go and how long i will be in the next in in my next life maybe barzakh how long i will be in barzakh how long i will be in uh, the resurrection day and after that the here after world why we can cannot think beyond the time and place because we were created in time and place and not just us but also the the other creatures were created in time and place therefore when we say that we are alive means that we are in time and we are in place and we have the movement in time and place so there are three major uh, matters here three major subjects here place time um, and movement when we talk about when we when we speak about movement we speak about time when we speak about movement we speak about place automatically when we think about time we think about the movement and when we think about place we think about the movement so since we cannot see this movement for the dead body we say it is a dead body because we we cannot see the time and place for the dead body what is the meaning of this 
It means that dead body cannot move from this place to another place. But we know that actually the dead body can move through the time and through the place, but in another shape. So we have the movement and the time and place in the life and in the death together. Now, what is the meaning of Allah Huwal Hai? And how can we uh, consider uh, this word here, Al Hai? This attribute of God and how can we say that Allah is high if I cannot think beyond the time and think beyond the place and we know that uh, high that I have in my mind is a matter that can move through the place and time but Allah is not like this does it mean that he is living in time or place I mean uh, can we say that Allah Ta'ala uh, gets old or he is here or there? Of course not. Of course not. He is not a limited uh, creature like us. He is beyond the time and beyond the place. But the problem is this that how can we speak about the life of God that it is beyond the time and beyond the place? And if these two concepts are necessary for us to think about life or death, how can this ayah, Allah, la ilaha illallah, wal hai, can make sense to us? And in addition to it, in other ayats of Quran Karim, we have that, uh, we, we recite that Allah Ta'ala is everywhere. So does it mean that it is that Allah Ta'ala is in place? For example, this ayah that A'udhu Billah Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Fa'ayna ma tuvallu fa thamma vajhullah Means wherever you look at it you can see Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta'ala is everywhere Does it mean that Allah Ta'ala is in every direction? He is in the north, in the south, in the west and in the east so at the same time he is in the west, west, he is in the east too. At the same time that it is in the north, he is in the south too. What does it mean? If Allah Ta'ala is everywhere, so where is he? In all the directions? In one of them? In two of them? And if he is in the west, when is he in the west? And if he is in the east, when is he in the east? So, what is the meaning of time and place here? But you know that the question of where and the question of when come out from our limited mind in time and place. So we ask, where is God and when is God? Because just we think about time and place and there is no alternative for us. When we want to think, we think in time and in place. This is our creation because we, are crea we were created in time and place. We cannot think beyond the time and beyond the place. Quran doesn't intend to answer the question of God, the question that relates to God of where and when according to our limited mind about life that these uh, time and place are the ground of uh, our thinking about life if Quran says Allah Ta'ala is alive Allah Ta'ala is high it has a different meaning of what we suppose, of what we have uh, in our mind about the meaning of life. The life of God is totally different from the life of us. The life of God is the life beyond the time and beyond the place. The life which time and place cannot control it and they don't affect on it. God will not get old because the age is a concept that relates to time and he is not here and not there 
So God is not here and not there because these two are the two terms for place. We can't see these uh, questions of where and when or here. Uh, sorry, we cannot use these questions of where and when and here and there and past, now, future for God. And any terms of time and place, we cannot use them for God. When Quran says he is everywhere, means he is the creator of place. And when Quran says he is present, it is because he is the creator of time. Indeed, time and place are two creatures of him, like other creatures. I mean that Allah Ta'ala is the creator of time and he is not in time. Allah Ta'ala is the creator of place and he is not in place. Life of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and if we say Allah Huwa Al Hay is uh, uh, relates to uh, the khalq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating so life relates to creating Allah huwa al hay means Allah huwa al khaliq Allah huwa al hay means Allah is the creator of hayat so Allah ta'ala is the creator of hayat huwa al hay means khaliq al hayat he has created the life and he has given it to all the creatures. So this hayat that we have is the hayat that Allah Ta'ala has given us. And it is not the life of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because it is beyond the time and beyond the place. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created the life. And has given it to all the creatures. And he has set the time and place for that hayat. For that life. He has set the time and place uh, as the borders and limitations for all the creatures. Even the uh, creatures in another world, like the greatest angels like Jibra'il or Mikail, they are living in time and place. But the time and place of them are different from our time and our place. And even Alam al Ghaib, invisible, invisible world, is in a special time and a special place. And just God alone is beyond them. And no one can reach to Him. Even Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is in a place and in a time. But Allah ta'ala is beyond the Arsh, is beyond the time and place. Because Arsh is the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever he wants to uh, destroy the life of the creatures by his free will, he can do it. And he can create other times and other places when he finishes our life. Because of this meaning of life, Hayat, for Allah ta'ala, is a special meaning and in Dua Kumail Amir al muminin Ali alayhi salam says Wala yumkinu al firaru min hukumatik means no one can escape from your kingdom because the kingdom of Allah Ta'ala has two borders the borders of place and border of time how can we escape from these borders how can we escape to beyond these borders no one can do it none of the creatures can do it just Allah Ta'ala is beyond them so you see that uh, every time that I want to speak about God and I think about time and place it is a God that I have in my mind and cannot be a real God cannot be a li alive God I mean uh, Allah al -hay. Because he is in the time and he is in the place. He will be God who I made him by myself. And I put it in my mind I, and I think about it uh, 
through the time and through the place. But sometimes I believe on this God, which I have made by my hand, and I worship this unreal God. And you may say, how? How can I worship this God? I can feel him in my life, but maybe it's a wrong feeling that I have. I can show this that I do not worship the real God, not by my claim, but by my, by my behavior. I don't claim that God is limited in time and place, but I show opposite of it by my actions. And I show that I do not have real faith on him. It is very simple. When I commit a sin, it means that I do not see him in that time or in that place that I am committing the sin. It means that the life of God is like the life of me and he cannot be uh, every time or everywhere. When I am eager to pray, when I am among people, but when I'm alone, I do not want to talk to him. Means that he is not with me when I am alone. When I ask him whenever I'm in trouble, but when I am safe, I don't call him. Means that God is dead in the time that I am safe. So it is better to believe on a God who is the creator of life. Not the God that I have in my mind and he is in the time and in place. We must feel that we are at the presence of the creator of life all the time and in all the places, in all the directions. We must practice on it. And then little by little we can feel God in our life as the creator of our life. And then when we compare our life to the life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can find that just Allah is high and we are dead. This is the life that Allah ta'ala has, has given it to us with these two limitations. And we do not have any capacity to go beyond it. We do not have any power uh, over God, but God has the power over us. And if God wants to uh, destroy our life, it can do it very easily by his free will. But how can we destroy the kingdom of God? Because we are in the border of time and place. So Allah la ilaha illa huwal hay. Huwal hay means just Allah Ta'ala is alive and this is the real meaning of Hayat. Sometimes we think that we have the real meaning of Hayat and we are the real Hay. But Na'udhu Billah there are some people who they just think that they are Hay and God is not Hay. They have some misunderstanding about the meaning of Hay. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us tawfiq. To think about these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and to feel the hayat of God in our life every day. And how can we feel this hayat of God in our life every day? We should remove the sins from our hearts and we should not commit the sin and we should feel that we are at the presence of Allah Ta'ala every time. Oh Allah Ta'ala forgive the sins which are covered on our heart and they do not allow us to fill you in our life. Oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala remove the germs of our hearts which do not allow us to see you by our heart. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته